Thank you. 
My output is at max volume. Okay. 
Yeah, it is a bit. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Target destroyed. I think if I don't like put my voice at a certain octave, it comes in really soft, so I just gotta be mindful of that. Uh, yeah, so just removal. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's just my I gotta have my voice set up and then uh level. So I guess Watsy saw the uh the beam swap to also go on. I mean, it has no draw treadmill. I'm wondering what the blue elemental incarnation is going to be. Uh. Oh. Oh, subtlety is, uh. Really? Subtlety? Going with. Yeah, that's, that's fair. I mean, there's nothing really subtle about the Capital Dome today. Yeah, it's just kind of that's that's uh, that's nothing that hits. It is. It feels like they kind of like they're they're not wrong to do it that way, but it's, it's, yeah. mm. uh, at least it's like four drop. So it's not like it's not just something that's coming out of nowhere. Or it's not like really perfect. I don't know the love of this game.
Uh, I'm fine here. I just realized also my mic was off the entire time, so they're yours. Oh well. Anyway. Yeah. Three, two, one. Where'd you clap? I did the clap. Okay, I didn't hear the clap. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and other persons. I. Don't have uh, my. I am not awake, but I'm trying to function. It's your host, uh, Kevin, ninja name Bobby Vostig, although it's, that should be Ninja Bobcat, and Jojo, Red Phoenix Cast, Variant, Variantos. Mm. Welcome to episode 16 of the Red Phoenix Cast professional sh show notes. Way to, uh, way to expose us right out of the gate there, Jojo. <laughs> I mean, okay, for real. We, um... God damn. Why do you always do this to me? Like, I feel like you're just trolling me at this rate. Because you keep forgetting my shtick. What is your shtick? It's Jojo Barrientos, aka Red Phoenix cast. It's always... It's always after, not in the middle. Okay. Uh... Put that in the show notes, bro. But in the show notes, I, I'll put it in the show notes, and you cannot. I I've read and... the show notes three times, man. Like I know where this is going. I know where we're going. I'm just so kind no, of. I'll put it... Oh god. I've already read the show notes like twice. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, sorry about that. That is uh, brain. Freezing. Freezing brain. Um. So. We have. We today. Today we have a ton of Modern Horizons too. I think the rest of the set has been spoiled. Yes, the entire set has been spoiled properly. So that means next week ish should be pre release. The pre yeah, the pre release for it. Yeah. So that that will be exciting. Um honestly despite uh apprehensions about how good it could be, I'm liking the set. That's alright. I'm not like yeah. over the moon for it, but you know. Oh yeah, like I'm not expecting something insane from the set. I think they've They've done a decent job of keeping things kind of, what's the word, balanced, I want to say. Yeah. But, um, first and foremost, first and friggin' foremost, oh look, Race the Bow Minion is a thing. I was going to say, why don't we talk um, about the cards that we literally have in the show notes before we touch any of them, any of the new stuff. Yeah, so all of it's basically starting off with you. Although, if you want to alternate, that is fine by me. 
Um, um do we Yeah, no, I I've got a couple here. I've got a couple here. So starting yeah. off with ignoble hierarch. Uh single green mana with single like Gobba Shaman with Exalted. So whenever it, uh, creature you control attacks alone, it gets a plus one plus one until end of turn, and it taps for one of a red, a green, or a black. This is a first for Jund, getting a its own basical high arc. There's a uh, and there, the the one thing I, that you I've seen if you make a note here is possible precedent for similar cards to exist as mana dorks. Is ignoble hierarch adds well as noble hierarch. I guess. I don't think we're gonna see one in Esper because Esper just doesn't ha it does isn't that a thing. It's not really a thing for Esper because uh, Bant technically has a lot of the exalted cards. All right, noble hierarch being the legendary, uh, the the f namesake one. But uh. If you wanted to take the next one over, I, I, I wasn't too... I, I kind of threw this in some of these ones because I was looking at them and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of major. Because I, I definitely want to talk about Endurance, but in an interesting way. Oh. In an interesting way? I, as in, throw it to you because you're going to talk about the next one. Oh! Wait, nice, nice transition there, sir. Uh, smooth I transition. Go... Smooth. Um, we will, we will get the hang of it eventually. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm gonna slide it into one of my picks. Um, I don't know if you want to throw it up on screen. My first pick here. Uh, flame blitz, one red. So just like a red mana. Um, for an enchantment. I'm, I'm struggling to find it because it's like buried under like so many spells and stuff. Oh yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I, uh, I definitely think we should have had something ready to go for this. <laughs> uh, like I said, we're we're getting the hang of it, people. We're we're uh, we're managing somehow. Mostly, it's just about managing. Um, just just tell the people how it, what, what it got, what it does. It's enchantment with at the beginning of your end step deals five damage to each planeswalker, uh, and it has cycling too, so you can discard it uh, for two generic mana and just and draw a card. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention about it was it, it's just a magical planeswalker hate card. It hits all planeswalkers. It doesn't just like defy one or two or ten. It will hit everything mm -hmm. um and i think that's pretty decent i think it goes in just about every red deck not just because it's a uh magical hate piece but because the fact that it cycles itself is pretty decent yeah i'm liking where this card is going like some of these cards are going they're they're the actual like there's some actual hate cards and in this set that deals with like problematic permanents like planeswalkers and the fact of the matter is five damage is nothing to scoff at so it kills a lot of planeswalkers even even if they got their plus one off so and that which is pretty solid in, in my honest opinion yeah it it's a good niche piece that kind of if it didn't uh, have a cycling, I think would be one of those, well, he can run it, but that's generally going to be a space that you have as a flex slot. Whereas now mm. it's like, well, if you run it, you're not losing anything. Exactly. So, I think it's pretty decent. I, I think it's solid. Yeah. Um, so... Handing it back to you. I'm going to skip over my next pick here and go straight to uh, Endurance. Uh, for one green and one green and a green, it's a 3-4 Elemental Incarnation with, with Flash, Reach, and Evoke. 
Uh, so the evoke cost in this case is being exiling a green card from your hand. When uh, endurance enters the battlefield, it's up to two target, two target players, really? Yeah. Re re Holy crap! You, if, if you wanna, if you wanna bring it up on the screen, there. That no, is, no, no, it's up to one. Is, it, yeah, you must read it. I, I'm, I pulled it up. Okay. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, up, up to, to one, one target, okay. up to one target player puts uh puts all the cards in the graveyard from their graveyard on the bottom of the library in the, any order. Um, people are saying this is uh, graveyard hate. I think this I is. Think so. I, I don't think so. It's yes, it works against dredge. However, however, this also works in dredge. Yeah. So, because at three mana with a flash reach, if somebody lands a. Uh, a Rest in peace or uh, ley line of the void. Uh, like uh, when they cast that, you could just flash this in, have a three four body with reach, and save your graveyard. Yeah, if somebody f wants to bajuka ball, you just say in response, "I flash this in." Yeah, you just and... you literally get to lull nope, lull nope them. Yeah, it's it's a powerful it's powerful enough on its own. Yeah, this this card's looking super sick. Oh yeah, and I green having it's... green having flash is pretty big too. Oh, that I I think just the fact that it works um in so many situations mm -hmm. makes it really strong. Um, the fact that it's one and double green is just really works i don't think so um yeah, it's like, a little I, tricky I, to splash in something like modern but like having having green cards in your in your green in a greenish deck this is not going to be too much of a far fetch because a green card could also be like green black or green blue or green whatever right like you don't you don't have to have a specifically green card. No, you, and that's the thing. It's it's a card that, from what I can see, is um, it's not going to be that hard to cast on its own. But like the evoke kind of sets a precedent for me um, with basically being able to cast things for free, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which is kind of a weird talking point to transition into, which is, you know, uh, Commander 2020 kind of established this as conditional free cards, and it's just like, well, this isn't a big thing um, to pay for. In terms does this, of, does uh, this mean we get to call this Force of Endurance? <laughs> Force move graveyard uh, salvation. <laughs> yeah, no, we could call it Force of a Deer. I think that uh, that's a fairly fitting uh, name to give I, it. I I like this card. <clears throat> I like where this is going. I like. Yeah. I like what it does. I like where it's going. Like a, like you you just get to like take a you get to see somebody take a mill deck and they're and you just go lol nope. I was like. Nice mill, buddy. Yeah, I think it. Uh, I think the new incarnation uh, cycle is definitely force of cards. Um, mm -hmm. As much as anybody might want to argue it, force of grief, force of fury, force of endearment, force of solitude, force of subtlety, which is about as subtle as a brick to the skull. But you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. So yeah. I like the cycle. I like uh, where it's going. Um, it's not. I have it here that's not overpowered. It has that potential to be strong, but it's not going to. I I don't think it's going to um, be overpowered at all. Like looking at all, looking at the kind of the rest of them. It doesn't seem like it's going to be powerful, like super powerful. And no, like it's. Subtlety might be the the strongest of them all because it's like 
four mana flash creature, flash flying. Like even just the four mana three three flash flying is pretty big, pretty big. But in this case, it's it has the ETB of use up the one target creature spell or planeswalker spell, put it on the top of bottom. That being able to just lull nope somebody from like counter spell uh, anti counter spell tech is like super good. It's not a non-creature spell, um, and that's kind of like, it works so well um, for what it is, which is, <clears throat> like you said, it's a counter spell, I like to call it force of will on the stick, like it's not as, the conditions aren't a perfect one-to-one, -one, but it is just as good. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the beauty of it, is like, there, it's never, it's never like, I, I don't think we're gonna get another I, I wouldn't say an Oko kind of thing. But No. I, I don't think we're gonna get like another Hogak level. I I honestly think that Watsi has kind of learned that hey, maybe if we didn't do another I another one of these things where it's just gonna be like, oh it's another it's another Hogak somewhere, right? I highly like it'll yeah. shake it'll shake things up like Imper they put it just imperial recruiter in this set and like now imperial recruiter is like modern legal mm. which is big that's big mm. and i'm i'm happy for it and i like i like the fact that imperial recruiter is now modern legal because you have to build some really interesting decks with it yeah hey i think yeah. It's, uh, because that will get you, what, a two-drop or something? Uh, power two or less. Or... So kind of a two-drop. Yeah. Oh, God. Can you go into the, uh, can you go into the Tarmogoyf with it? I think so. Uh, I th think so. In a, there's a way to do it. Yeah. Yes, in a way. So... Because it's always constantly checking, right? Um, let me check. I'm going. You can go Charm into it. Um, because let me check, let me, I'm checking Gather. Out. I'm just checking Gather for the ruling here. Uh. The ability defines Tarmogoyf's power and toughness in in all zones, not just the battlefield. If it's in the graveyard, it will count itself. So in this case, just by the three, uh, the ruling from uh, the third, the nineteenth of uh, of March. The fact of the matter is, is like there is a way to do it while when your graveyard is not like super loaded. So as long as your graveyard is not super loaded, then you can find a time we're through, through that. Yes. Maybe because it's three, it's uh, looking for power two or less, right? Yeah. So maybe you run two or three imperial recruiters in your uh, gun deck, and <clears throat> I don't know. I don't up, think uh, no, no, no. The, the reason why this, I don't think that worked. I don't think John wants Imperial Recruiter is not to search for Time of Life. The, the fact of the matter is, is John is a very 50% deck. They're, they're maximizing as many things as humanly possible. Okay. This is, this is more, I think that, I think Imperial Recruiter is going to be better in the, in the Jeskai, um, Chihili Rife combo deck. The Shihili Rai, um, Beladar Guardian combo. Uh, yeah. Actually, it would be really good there. Um, that's good even point. if you put a recruiter, if you, if you, even if you put recruiter on the battlefield, you search for the other one, you get, you, you have Shihili Rai. So the only thing, you've yeah. got a rip Imperial recruiter good to get your, um, your, you, you know. Yeah, yeah. My brain's a little bit dead. 
and that's that's uh, kind of the catch twenty two. Is it's just like I think that's just really good. So, I think that's where that I think that's where our, our pre recruit is going to see a lot of play. It's just in that little in that in that uh, line. Because even if you have an uh, Imperial Recruiter already in play, you play Shahili Rai, you, pl you minus it, you get Imperial, uh, you get another Imperial Recruiter. So, so uh, I want to touch on one here. All right. Um, because we are not seeing an accompanying card this uh, set, but I think it might become a thing. Yevamaya Cradle of Growth, Legendary Land, each land is a force in addition to its other types. Um, Dodo, I'm just gonna read from the show notes for its introduction. Oh, look, Green Urborg. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of creatures that have Forest Walk in this set as well. That's also gonna, that, that also will synergize really well with that card, but I just. I'm seeing a half of an engine right now, and I'm not seeing a lot of payoff to it, other than maybe Forest Walk. So unless I, unless I'm missing something where there's a cre there's like something that makes mana equal to the number of forces in play, I don't know. Um. Yeah, that was kind of like where I was going with it too. Is um is the precedent now set for um a cabal coffer a green cabal coffers to be released and if so you know like that's kind of big for the uh format going forward i don't see it i i don't think i'll i don't think we'll ever see it because i don't it, think so either because what why do we need another cabal coffers in green i we already have we already have Itlamot Cradle of the Sun in green. And, why do we need uh, one for lands? Green. That which the reason why the, the reason why the ball coffers was already good is because it 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 checked for every single swamp. So even yeah. if you had even if you didn't have Urborg, there were still ways of get of getting lands that were that had the swamp subtype and now that's like a little bit easier to do like you're not you're not reliant on a, a specific enchantment because there's two enchantments that do the same thing Is it? it's uh it's prismatic omen and dryad of the elysian grove yeah so you could still run the thing is this cabal coffers even in just a mono black deck is just still gonna be good. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not saying that 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 this is going to be um I don't I think like you said, um Guy's Trail is kind of our cabal coffers for green. Um as much as uh what's the one? The uh It's not Cabal Coffers, has... it's Urborg. No, no, no. Yavamaya is the Urborg, right? Yeah. But I'm saying that guy's Cradle and uh, Cradle Itlamok are the... They already uh, exist. Coffers. Yeah, we don't need yeah. another one. No, I think if they're going to do a uh, Cabal Land cycle, it's kind of like, well, you've already established uh, kind of a precedent for this, right? Wait a um, minute. No, dude, I just realized something. Huh. There already is a there already is a way of do, making a crap ton of mana with a Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. I just realized it. What is it? Nissa who shakes the world. Oh god, yeah, because it it doesn't just say Yeah, it Oh god. I'm a winner, yeah, bro. Cause... Dude, I'm a freaking winner. <laughs> Cause guess who's got four cop guess who's got four Guess who's got six copies of Nissa who shakes the world? Oh god. Yeah, so for anybody who might not be able to follow along, um you Let me let me you pull this up because it's in my binder. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, Nissa who shakes the world. 
And I have four copies of these stained glass uh, secret lair versions in my binder ready for sale. It is a five mana legendary planeswalker Nissa for three three green green. So it's a five loyalty and it's passive says whenever you tap a forest for mana you add an additional green. That's it. <laughs> Game over, man. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> the, min the minus eight as well, although I don't think she'll ever get to this in modern. Uh, she might. Um, you get an emblem with land control, have indestructible, and then you can search your library for any number of forest cards, put them on the battlefield tap, and shuffle your library. This thing does not say... Uh, each land in play. This says each land is a force in addition to its other types. I I don't know if that's actually going to work. Um, I mean, is it on gather yet? Uh, I am checking right now. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm of the opinion that uh, just because. The wording, uh... I want two of these. Really I, I automatically... I, I for, kid you not, I already want a play set of this. Of this. Of Yavamaya. Oh, yeah. Knowing, knowing what I know... Knowing what I know now, I want... F as many play sets as I can get my hand... Grab my hands on. I didn't put... I'm so sure it's a uh, force. Okay, so if it's not... If if it doesn't apply to lands in play, then yeah, that it's yeah. I'm um, assuming it doesn't apply. It only applies to lands that are in play. That's what I'm assuming um, because if 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 it's anything similar to Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth, I'm pretty sure. That, I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. So the lands are not swamps uh, when they're not on the mountains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was wrong. Um. So, yeah, it's still really strong, though. Uh, the fact that, like you said, it can, with Nissa L, can tap for its own color and then green is nuts. Yeah. Yeah, 319 ruling. So, Land cards on, on the battlefield aren't swamps as while well, Herbivore is on the battlefield. So, yeah. <laughs> it only works on the battlefield. So, I'm, still, I'm assuming it's, no. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the same on the other on the other side there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, this, that's nuts. Um, yeah. I think if they wanted to do a Cabal Copper screen, it's... Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> and green gets all the good stuff. <laughs> I mean, green... They've been pushing green to be really powerful really like as of lately. So this isn't this yeah. is, to me. This isn't a, that much of a surprise. It it really isn't mm -hmm. due to the fact that it's mm -hmm. like you don't you don't need to have such like superpower to really really realize. Hey, this is actually kind of obnoxious. <laughs> that being said, the fact that I could play this in Captain Sissy alongside Nissa who shakes the world and freaking make sure get like shit tons of mana. I just need a mana sink to put it away. Yeah. It's a... Uh... So. Well, any any card that says your green tap for an additional... Um, your mana taps for more mana, basically. Yeah. Anything that says your force tap for more mana is just like, oh, okay. I guess that's a thing now. <laughs> um... I don't know if you want to jump back to one of yours here. Uh, yeah, okay, let's do it. Uh, go with Damn. Uh, black, black for a sorcery with overload for two white, white. Uh, destroyed target creature. A creature destroyed, de destroyed this way cannot be regenerated. So, it's Damn with a nation on top. <laughs> I've got an answer for your board there, bruh. Is it Damn Nation? I was hoping you would be saying, damn, and then I could say, 
How'd you know? I I'm I'm running this and I'm I'm running damn and I I, I think it, there, I'm replacing. I I'm not replacing damnation or or um or one of my board wipes in there. I think I'm just putting it straight into Atraxa. It's too good. Cause here's here's one other thing. Overlord cost is an alternate cost, meaning that the only thing that meaning that it gets around a couple of things. The main one being Gadok Teague. It's a damnation that gets around Gadok Teague. Think about that for a second. It's a, it's a damnation that you can't that uh Dodgers Teague. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even repeating the card now. Uh, yeah, to, call, to quote, uh, Ron Simmons. Darn! <laughs> damn's a, damn's um, a good card. Yeah, it is a damn good card. I think this card. set's just um, like a straight up, like, a deck set of mono Dees. It's literally everything has never been, like, too broken. That's what I've noticed. No, it's a nice little balance in every card, um, but you can kind of like break them if you're really working at it. Yeah, or not like even you really could, working at it. You could really push the power on a lot of the cards on here, and but it doesn't feel ridiculous. Yeah, it's not so powerful that it's going to uh, break the format. We're not going to have another whole deck dump. To be fair, the, the, the thing was is Hogak was already good in Dredge. And yeah. all it needed was just a little swift kick in the rear just to get it going. You would have had to discard the Hogak to play it. And then dredge it basically dredge it out. Which were you were already gonna do. Or you were yeah. gonna find I like the fact of the matter is it the the fact the the condition of having to cast it from the graveyard instead of in the hand. Yeah, the fact that it can come out of the graveyard um, and you can basically thin your deck out that way is. Yeah, you're not worried. Like, you, yeah, like you said, it is really good in dredge, and that's kind of like been where it is. Yeah. Um. It's yeah, not, a, feel, it's not uh, a huge. It's not a big issue when that happens, but it's like I don't. I, I think I think Watsy turned uh, this is the one set that they learned from Modern Horizons and they'll be like, Yeah, we're not doing that again. Yeah, because Modern Horizons one was like what a couple years ago? Yeah. Uh, Horizons release date. It was twenty Yeah, June eighteenth, twenty twenty one. Yeah. So roughly card designs. Um, card design is every two years. Um, it's gotten so much better. Yeah, it's yeah. Like if we say this is about three years ago. Hmm. So yeah, they took a couple of years to kind of figure out uh, from the mistakes. Oh wait, 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 this is no. I want modern horizon. Sorry, this is saying June 18, 2021. For some reason, it won't show me. Uh, maybe if I put one on it. Hmm. For some reason, it won't. June 14, 2019. Okay, so yeah, it's about two years ago. So, uh, like I said, it took them a couple years to kind of figure out design and then go from there. Um, And, like, they learned from their mistakes. Like, nobody wanted to deal with another whole gag. It was hilariously funny because I was listening to some of the podcasts and they were like, oh, where's uh, where's the next Hogak card coming? And I'm like, I think I'm pretty sure Watsy learned their lesson on that. We're not seeing it. Yeah, I... When, when I hear something like that, it's like, oh, when's the next, uh, when's the next X or Y? I'm like, just shut up about it. Like, I understand yeah. that players are going to try and break every single card in this set. It's just, that's inevitable. It's yeah. it's not we should be looking for the card and screaming it for it to be banned. Let's 
watch the format shake and see what happens if i i think a lot of these cards are pretty pretty solid as it is and don't need a lot of like too much stuff like no it's and it's go ahead like if you look i'm looking just in th through the entire list I'm not seeing anything that's screaming at me. No. Demand. No. Like it's a uh... everything just feels mono dice. They knew what they wanted to do, I think. Um, because Modern Horizons felt like let's just slam a bunch of good cards into a set and see what happens. Oh, and they did. And, like, we're looking at it now, it's just, like, the set's just solid. Yeah. I think, um, if they do, if they, like, it feels like it took fire design a while to kind of figure out, uh, what their feet were, uh, what they wanted in terms of design. Mm-hmm. Um, because like even the uh, even the standard sets are looking pretty solid. Um, well, not solid, but they're not. It's not a make or break type of thing. Um, everything's decent for the most part. Like uh, Spectavian was a decent set. Um, I'm gonna say it was nothing to write home about. Is the thing? Yeah, no, it really isn't. Like there, like there's a couple of cards in here that I'm looking at, and I'm just like, yeah, these are this is solid. Like tireless provisioner, a three mana th three three mana three two with landfall that makes a treasure token, a food token yeah. or a treasure token. That's just fine. Like I'll take, I'll play this. Like I will actually play this. It's yeah, a lot of it's really good. Um. And I think that kind of works in its favor. Is that this is a good, this is a good set. It's a uh, oh, um, dude, new card, new card for new card from new card for Marin. Oh yeah, four mana, uh, vile and tumor, four mana two two, de uh, four mana for a two two death toucher, ETB, yeah. uh, oh. search your library for a card, put that card in your graveyard, and then shuffle. Seems pretty Ooh, good. This is a card. Seems pretty that's good, right? For... Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's also a card for my Hogak deck. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Daddy got a new toy. Mm. Um, Daddy Hogak got a new toy. <laughs> I, I, um, again, like the, again, we're, we're looking at cards that are just, they're just decent. Yeah. Like, I think the close, go ahead. Play Essence is like three mana sorcery that exiles target creature or planeswalker. Like what? Whoa! Hi. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get us back on uh, track here in a moment. Um, I think the only Hogak like is Drift, and that's mostly because of his ability. Um, but I don't see him being as bad as Hogak. The only one that I would be actually worried about is maybe like Merktide Regent in the, in that slot, but even then, it's just like I don't think it even gets played in the same thing. Like, there's Magus of the Bridge. You continue yeah. the cycle of the Maguses, but like even then, I don't feel like I'm scared. Yeah, like you said, it's it's a lot of decent stuff that. If it wasn't, if it was in any other set, to be like, oh yeah, this is cool. this is bumps up the power a little bit, but it doesn't really break the format. No, because you're not pr printing it in the standard. 